Jokic versus the Monstars, I guess, is what well, it kind of okay. looked so, like out there. <laughs> so Team Serbia had two different friendlies this week. They played Team Australia. I believe it was on Tuesday. And then they had a back-to-back -back against Team USA for an exhibition game. That was interesting. One note on both these games is that Bogey didn't play in either of them. That was, uh, he was clearly missed, I think, in both. But I wanted to, to quickly talk about the Australia game because I, I did think it was interesting. Australia was clearly playing very hard and they're a very small team. So it was interesting to see uh, Serbia decide to go small in the second half of that game. Their double big lineups were not looking good uh, with Jokic and Milushinov front court. So in the second half, they started Petrushev uh, and I think they were able to keep up speed wise with Australia a little bit better. Um, again, you can go small with Jokic. Though I wouldn't call this going small. It's just not going double big for Serbia. I thought Jokic was pretty, like, quiet in this game. Like, I didn't really yeah. notice him much. Uh, he was more, like, acting as a hub. And it was more about the guards. Uh, like I said, Bogey didn't play. Marinkovic hadn't played because he had uh, some injury thing. Uh, which gave... Uh, I believe Michi still came off the bench, but they gave some more run to, uh, like, Poku and Yarmaz. Or maybe Matrix did start, but it was yeah, it was more like about the started. perimeter players, yeah. basically in this game. Mm -hmm. um, Josh Giddy is really good in FIBA play, but you know who's even better? It's Patty Mills. FIBA Patty <laughs> Mills is an absolute problem. You see, he makes a play here at the beginning of the game, but he was really their closer. Like he was just making like every shot that he took in that fourth quarter, and you know these these small quick guards are really tough to stop, particularly in international play. Because, like, you don't have, like, a KCP out there that's, like, specialized in keeping up with these guys, right? Yeah. Um, so he's able to get to his spots, and as long as he's making his jump shots, like, it's just really tough. I had made a comment earlier in the game that, you know, Giddy was getting downhill, not easily, but getting downhill and making plays for everybody. But after a certain point, it seemed like Serbia was doing a good job of reading his passes. Um so I thought it would just be like a good idea to try to make somebody else make a play. And Patty Mills was that person. So when both of them were on the floor, it was a really uh, a tough offense to stop because everyone just kind of knew where to be. Uh, lots of transition scoring in this game. It was pretty sloppy from both teams, to be honest. So there were lots of turnovers and lots of runouts from both teams. And I was like, oh, well, this is how Serbia looks on the first leg of the back-to-back. I'm not particularly yeah. hopeful for the game. Especially against, against a much more talented team. But yeah, what were any specific... I'm just playing general highlights of the game, but did you have specific Jokic thoughts? Because he... Yeah, it kind of was like no, a more like quiet I said, game. like he kind of faded into the background in this game. Um, it was a really close and competitive game. I don't think that that was bad. I just think it was... I think he ended up being more impactful in the minutes without Milutinov on the floor um probably i don't know what it was like the spacing or the defense like i think Milutinov again has just had a really rough uh you know few games leading up to the olympics right now and he actually didn't play i believe in the game against the usa but with Jokic specifically it was clear that he was trying to get a lot of different guys involved and not really i don't think that there was any stretch of the game where it felt like he was like controlling the game or like continuously going at somebody or whatever it is like australia was generally just a tiny team and i feel like he could have taken over at any point and just didn't so i thought oh maybe it's like energy con conservation <laughs> um uh for you know the second leg of the back-to-back -back, which was against team usa maybe it was but it didn't quite work um mm -hmm. so we can we can definitely get to that it was a tough game serbia got destroyed by the end of it it was 105.79 the versus second... team usa there's Team USA. The first yeah. half was pretty competitive, and it was good, and Serbia had a lead for a little bit. They were really locked in. Jokic was yelling and communicating on defense, trying to still be aggressive. But uh, at some point, it was just, you're going to get worn down versus the depth of the United States because their second unit is very, very good. And as soon as they put in AD and bam... It's another double big problem for Jokic and Serbia doesn't have the shooting and all that to 
really punish I think that's stuff just like an that. average sized lineup, honestly, because AD and Bam are both undersized for centers, <laughs> and Bam is like a good size power forward, I guess. Yeah, but uh, yeah, because Jokic could like technically one on one power through them. They still just have like good quickness and hands, and it's just for Jokic to have to go through both of them still kind of like an, a, a nuisance. He was shooting was a little off in this game, which kind of sucks. Because we want to see that three, we want to see that jump shot be there, because his three level scoring is really important. So it was... yeah, I mean, I just wanted to comment on that because a lot of people have been worried about Jokic's jump shot, and I don't know if it's going to like come back and be efficient or not. But my sense of in, ter in terms of the importance to the Nuggets, my sense of that is just that. I don't think Jokic needs to be making threes, but I think somebody needs to be making threes. And in this game, like you saw the same issues that the Nuggets had where, yeah, Jokic wasn't making his jump shot, but especially in that second half, neither was anybody else on Team Serbia. Uh, yeah. You know, until the very end when the game was basically over. Um, and like I said, Bogey didn't play in this game. Uh, and he's probably the best shooter, particularly off the dribble, right? Like mm -hmm. when you don't have somebody that's a threat to pull up. You get uh, people going under on screens a lot. And sometimes guys like um, Alexa were able to punch that and other times not. But as long as Jokic is able to do what he did just here on the inside, uh, that's I, I think that's really all you need from him if other guys are able to do their job, which is to operate off the DHOs, make their open shots, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. I kind of... I disagree with the importance of Jokic being able to make particularly his threes um, in order for Team Serbia to be like very competitive, like peak level, whether or not they're able to beat Team USA or not. Like, I don't think that Jokic's three point shot really has as much bearing on that as people say. Um, and same for the Nuggets. Like, I think other guys need to be able to step up when those shots are created for them. If yeah. that makes sense. I just think about the Wolves series, though, where they were, like, letting him be able to shoot from three. And I worry They were letting when... everybody, though. Yeah, That's exactly. the thing. And if Jokic could have just made some, we would have been much better off. But if anyone else could make some, we also would have been better. That's true. But I, you, it still is going to help the Nuggets if Jokic can make the threes. We need it. I just think <laughs> at this point in Jokic's career... Him making threes isn't going to bend defenses as much, yeah. even if he's making a lot of them. Like I just don't think that they're going to react as much because they're just going to live with it. Yeah, just, just like they're going to live with anyone way. else making the threes, which is why. And I prefer him being on the inside because, to me, I've I've said this a lot. Like his ability to dominate the glass is probably like in terms of the how important it is for his impact on a game versus how important it's perceived has the biggest gap of any skill that Jokic has and that requires him being inside and so yeah. that's why I don't really it's not that I don't care about the jump shot it'd be great if it came back but especially for those like bailout moments right like that was such a such a big thing you know even during the even during the title run but the point is everybody else being able to play off of the things that he can do which is you know a multitude of skills yeah. particularly on the inside yeah, it's inside games more important. Um, you don't have to agree with me, Will. I'm just, I just like, like stating I just my want, position for the record. I just want Jokic to bring the scoring from pretty much anywhere because that's what kind of makes him the best player in the world, in my opinion, um, along with, with the passing. Too, but... The passing and the scoring from every level is what I think is the argument of for him as the best player because, you know, He's not bringing in. So if he can't make his threes like he has it, like he didn't last year, then he's not the best player in the world. I think that it makes it more difficult to argue that he is the best player when you have someone like, you know, other players who are scoring from everywhere on the floor. Do you think Luke is the best player in the world? Not right now, but there's a <laughs> chance he could be argued. He will be. <laughs> People will pick him up and argue that he is the best player mm -hmm. in the world just because of that, even if they're wrong, right? Well, yeah, people are going to argue whatever they want, Will. Exactly. That's fandom. <laughs> exactly. But perception is the reality a lot of the times in, in the NBA. Like, people still think Embiid was the best player when he's healthy. <laughs> yeah, well, those people are wrong. Yeah, so, you know, Jokic, like you said, he, he 
can operate out of the post. He was doing that. The Serbia was getting tons of good looks because USA was kind of focusing more on the interior, less on the perimeter. Serbia was hitting some shots early, and then by as the games went on, just not able to convert those perimeter shots. And therefore, USA went on a lot of runs, and then the game got way out of hand, and it was pretty much over from, from that standpoint. And there was even interesting implications about the effort that Serbia put into this exhibition game. Some could argue maybe they shouldn't have tried that hard, but I think it's good to see how you stack up against a team that talented, uh, really give it a, a go at it. But with no bogey, it's also hard to really evaluate yourself because they need their second best player and their best shooter. Yeah, I mean, Team USA's bench looked really good again. Um, and from the starters, I just, I really wanted to shout out Steph because I felt like, especially in the beginning of the game, Serbia was doing a really good job defending basically everything that Team USA had going except for Steph running off ball. Like, and it occurred to me that a big difference, like Steph looked so comfortable in this game but a big difference for him going into international competition compared to say the last his past nba season is one there there are one like other threats on the floor (laughs) there are no other threats on the floor uh with golden state right now uh especially with clay gone but even when he was there uh you know he's not quite the same as he used to be but also these international teams don't regularly play the golden state warriors so I'm watching Serbia try to guard Steph, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, this is not, like, in, in the NBA, when you play Golden State, Steph's being blitzed and doubled all game long. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he has, like, the best, uh, usually, like, the best green navigating guard or wing defender on him off the ball to play aggressive ball denial throughout the entire game. Of course, having other threats on the floor makes it easier to... Uh, you know, not have to face those kinds of defenses because someone else could punish that. But from what I saw, there wasn't a lot of that from Team Serbia anyway. And so Steph got to just like run around like a little three point shooting demon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I felt like he had like the loud shots. That yeah. was like, how did that even, how did, how did that even happen? Like, how did he get open? All of that. And then he was making them. So he was really good. And I think that he's going to be a real weapon continue to be a real weapon throughout FIBA because of that. I think it's just going to be really difficult for uh, other teams to stop the way that he plays. It's just like so different than what teams are generally used to defending. And even in the NBA, like you could see instances where like when the golden, when the warriors play an Eastern conference team that only plays them twice a year, like it's just different than when, the Warriors play a team that's in their division, plays them at least four times a year, and is used to at least having to deal with the way that they play. Whereas, yeah, Team Serbia is clearly like unprepared. Um, for yes. him in particular, yeah. I actually thought that they did a, de- a decent job of guarding everyone else, just going through the highlights of this game. I actually liked the shots that Team Serbia generated more than the shots that Team USA generated, but... You know, when AD's hitting his jumper, when Bam's hitting his jumper, when, you know, Team USA was actually playing some pretty good defense in this game and, you know, creating a lot of transition opportunities as well. Yeah, it's just, it's hard to stop them, especially if your offense is off. Yeah, I thought Serbia was trying to be aggressive and put pressure on the ball at the start of the game. There were some attempts to just get between Steph and, and a ball handler when he was off ball. But then, you know, just running through different screens, just running around a couple times, and then he was open. So uh, uh, there's tons of threats on Team USA. I don't know if that had, you know, something to do with the fact that Serbia wasn't totally committed to that game plan. I mean, it's just so hard. What what can you really do? Um, Well, you have to decide, like, what you're going to take away. I would suggest taking away Steph Curry threes as, like, one of the top bullet points. I don't think that's something you want to live with. (laughs) It looked like Steph was making a conservative effort to really make his three-point shot like the thing for the USA offense in that game too, where it's, maybe he wasn't as aggressive hunting that shot in uh, previous games, uh, but this time he really was. So that was really cool to see if you're a Steph fan and the crowd was loving it. Uh, <laughs> the crowd is actually really cool yeah. to listen to is in Abu Dhabi. Um, they look like they're having Jokic a great time. I think was getting MVP chance there. Yeah, yeah, he did. 
So there's love for Steph and for Jokic in Abu Dhabi. So wow. it turns out that the people love three point shooting and not making three point shots. Yes. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Shout out to Bam and AD. Like Bam finally gets to play his actual position at power forward, and AD gets to play four and a half with FIBA spacing. And yeah, he's been he's been kind of crushing it, continuing to crush it in these exhibition games. I wonder if. Team USA ever get to a point where they just decide to start AD at yeah, center? I that's think what I was that saying. he just I was like makes starting. more sense. Like they just look a lot better defensively, in particular with him on the floor. I think honestly, like offensively, I don't know that Embiid adds so much to this already star-studded like starting lineup. Where yeah, everyone else can shoot, so who cares if your five can shoot? You can play four out, one in, run all your five out sets. AD's a lob threat to make up for that. Like, it's not like they're worried about their spacing. Yeah. And it's definitely like a, it seems like a political thing, like personalities yeah, and like who's in the pecking order and that kind of thing. And it might just be the case. Like, I mean, honestly, like Embiid could just crush some bench units. So I think he should true. want to come off the bench. Yeah, because I was wondering even if him playing with such talent, it's a, such, it's a change for him where on the Sixers, he's the number one option and he's scoring and he's, heavy usage heavy on the ball and he's relegated to a variety of off ball and on ball in in this united states offense uh do you think that that is a factor of just like this change in style where he's not like the al alpha i guess so to say honestly i don't know that kerr wants to move and be to the bench because the bench has been so good playing their run and gun style and i don't know how much mm. Embiid wants to like go get up and down the floor so maybe he's just gonna live with it i mean it's been working so far they've won all their exhibition games they're probably gonna win all of their games on their way to the gold medal anyway and, you know you could always start him and then just like reduce his minutes in the rotation so it's not a hard and fast thing it's just like such a clear difference in the way that team usa plays on both ends of the floor like it's just less clunky when it's when it's ad out there and even when it's BAM, although I don't think they've done any BAM at five lineups, just because the ball moves more. And I think, like, I've, I saw some, uh, particularly the highlights when Embiid is, like, like running off of pin downs and stuff like that. But I don't know how, like, much he likes to be in continuous movement off the ball. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, his fit on the whole team is kind of weird. But you were always going to have these issues when you have these high usage stars all coming together and trying to form a super team. I do like just looking at these games from an NBA officiating standpoint, because a lot of his flops and grifting weren't called or at least less than in the NBA. And I just like really wish the NBA could look at this and see how much the fans prefer this and try to make a shift from what they are doing in the NBA. I don't know why or how Adam Silver could look at this game and like just look at the EuroLeague and look how this Olympics is going to be played and officiated and not want that in the NBA. But what do I know? I don't know why fans would want to see more free throws, but whatever. You hear that, guys? Will wants playoff officiating all year round. I want even <laughs> more harsh playoff officiating year round. <laughs> I want it more than what the NBA playoffs is officiated, but yeah. And please remember to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, leave us a review. We're on Apple Music, we're on Amazon Music, we're on Spotify. Share us with your friends, your enemies, your family, and their enemies. <laughs> and always remember that winning is fun and losing sucks. Bye.